Hi, this is David Bank Turtle. Welcome to video 7D, which is the fourth and final video devoted to the topic of operational risk for the 2012 Financial Risk Manager exam. And that means we complete the Basel readings or Basel assignments, and specifically Basel 3, the International Framework for Liquidity Risk, revisions to Basel 2 Market Risk Framework, and Developments in Modeling Risk Aggregation. So in terms of Basel III, the first topic is the minimum liquidity coverage ratio. So this aims to ensure that a bank maintains an adequate level of unencumbered, high quality liquid assets that can be converted into cash to meet liquidity needs for a 30 calendar day time horizon under severity events. And so the liquidity coverage ratio here is the stock of high quality liquid assets needs to be at least as great as the total net cash outflows over the next 30 calendar days. So you see how it's a coverage ratio over the short term cash outflows. Now the high quality liquid assets need to have fundamental characteristics and market related characteristics. The fundamental characteristics are that they have low credit and market risk, an ease of certain an ease and certainty of valuation, low correlation with risky assets, and be listed and developed on a developed and recognized exchange market. The market related characteristics of high quality liquid assets are they need to be part of an active and sizable market. There needs to be the presence of committed market makers. There needs to be low market concentration. And they can be represented by assets that typically represent a flight to quality. So the two categories are level one, which can be concluded up, up to and without any limit, and level two that can only comprise up to 40% of the stock. So level one assets are cash, central bank reserves, and some high quality marketable securities. The net stable funding ratio, so this is the other ratio that's added in Basel III, in addition to the liquidity coverage ratio that we just looked at. This is structured to ensure that long-term assets are funded with a, at least a minimum amount of stable liabilities in relation to our liquidity profiles. So this net stable funding ratio aims to limit an over-reliance on short-term wholesale funding during times of buoyant market liquidity and encourage better assessment of liquidity risk across all on and off on and off balance sheet items. So here also a ratio, the available amount of stable funding divided by the required amount needs to be at least one. And so in regard, then we're asked about the practical applications of prescribed liquidity monitoring tools, including contractual maturity mismatch. So this Profile identifies the gaps between contractual inflows and outflows of liquidity for defined time bands. Concentration of funding. This metric is meant to identify those sources of wholesale funding that are such significance that withdrawal of this funding could trigger liquidity problems. So included A, funding liabilities sourced from each significant counterparty in relation to the bank's t balance sheet total. B, funding liability sorts from each significant product or instrument as a, as a, as a share of the bank's total balance sheet. And list, list of assets and liability amount, amounts by significant currency. Available unencumbered assets is a monitoring tool. This metric provides supervisors with data on the quality and key characteristics of banks available unencumbered assets. These assets have the potential to be used as collateral to raise additional secured funding in secured markets and or are eligible at central banks and as such may potentially be additional sources of liquidity for the bank. Liquidity ratio, liquidity coverage ratio by significant currency. While the standards are required to be met in one single currency, in order to better capture, capture potential currency mismatches banks and supervisors.